Welcome to the Accelerate Church TV program. We are so glad that you could tune in with us today. Pastor Jeremy is currently teaching the series, Go. He is breaking down the Great Commission. Go into all the world and preach the gospel. That is for you and me, my friend. And Pastor Jeremy is teaching us how to do that. Let's head into the sanctuary right now. Not every spiritual experience that a person experiences is inspired by God. But the Word is always inspired by God. So therefore, to do this, you can know, guaranteed, I am being spiritual. You don't have to go tell people that. That's kind of goofy. What you need to do is just be legit and do the Word. And let the fruit show in your life, I'm a doer of the Word. Most Christians are so well practiced in acting on offense, there's no real marked difference between them and Pagan Joe down the street. You got to stop it. God didn't inspire you to be offended and act on that. No one has ever had a more legit spiritual experience than Peter, James, and John. They were with Jesus on the Mount of Transfiguration. And I was talking to my dad about this earlier, and I, I just feel inspired, I believe by God, to read this to you. Peter said in 2 Peter chapter 1, that the Lord Jesus showed me, he called his body a tent, that I'm about to lay this tent down. That's what he said in verse 14. And then you look at verse 16, here's what he says. In other words, in the context of I'm about to lay my life down, guys, understand we haven't followed cunningly devised fables. When we made known unto you the power and coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, but we were eyewitnesses of his majesty. Look at verse 17. For he received from God the Father honor and glory when there came such a voice to him from excellent glory. This is my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And this voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. So at the Mount of Transfiguration, the pinnacle of any Christian spiritual experience, he was with Jesus. Jesus was transformed to glory. He talked to Moses, represents the law, and Elijah represents the prophets, and they were having a discussion. And Peter, being like most American Christians, decided, I'm going to weigh in here. Let's build all three of you temples. God interrupts him and says, this is my beloved son in whom I'm well pleased. Hear him. In other words, when he said, hear him, he said, shut your mouth, Pete. Pete dropped on the floor along with James and John. They were there on the ground having the most epic, I'm trying to think of any word I can come up with, legit, I've used it already a lot, spiritual experience, more legit than anything you've ever heard from anybody in your entire life. More moving, more spectacular, more awing. Are you following this? And that's what Peter had on his mind when he's about to lay his life down. I remember that. I remember that experience. But look what he said in verse 19. We have also a more sure word of prophecy. Wait a minute. You're talking about the Mount of Transfiguration. The pinnacle, literally, of a spiritual experience with Jesus. And he turned it to you and me and said, we have a more sure word of prophecy. It's more sure. More sure than if you heard God thunder his voice and he fell down. More sure than you looking at Jesus in his glorified body, talking to Elijah and Moses. Yeah. Wherein to you do well to take heed. There's where most Christians unhook. Yeah, you're talking about the word again. We know, Pastor Jeremy, you love the word you say. We're kind of tired of hearing about it. Well, you would do well to take heed. Pay attention. As unto a light that shines in a dark place till the day dawn and the day star arise in your hearts, knowing this first, that no prophecy of what? The scripture. What's he talking about? The more sure word of prophecy is the word of God and none of us for any private interpretation. So when you decide to say, well, I drink because Jesus turned water to wine, private interpretation. Peter also mentions that people take this word and twist it to their own destruction. 
They take the word and, and they twist it. You know when they do that? Private interpretation. They don't go run it through their pastor. They don't run it through any spiritual leadership. Someone who, who's actually a minister of the gospel and you can actually track that people that are legit say, yes, we see God's hand on their life. I, I never cease to be amazed at all the movements, quote unquote, that happen across America in the name of Christianity. People saying, you know, and of course it was huge during COVID, churches left the building. That's a, that's a travesty for the church to leave the building. Well, they have church in China. I know. Do you know God's best is that we have a place that we all come and gather without persecution. That's God's best. Why? Because when you come in here, you hear the word of God. And by the way, I, I'm just not a Johnny come lately into Christianity and decide, no, I'm, I think I'm just going to pick one out to give you tonight. Let's see what God wants to do. Hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. Israel's like scattered sheep. The lions have driven him away, for the king of Assyria devoured him. Now at last, this Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon has broken his bones. <laughs> Depart, my friends. <laughs> Was that inspired by God? The scripture's inspired by God. But there's no verifiable application for your life. That comes through study, through being plugged in, through time. Coming in and out to church, in and out to church. Dr. Barkley's on the radio with me this week from our studio recording. I mentioned it the other day, but I will mention it again. He says on this Friday broadcast coming up here in, in two days, he says on that broadcast, he said what he did with the Marines is he'd go time and time again and do the same thing over and 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 over. He said, let me change up. Uh, go to church on Sunday and then on Wednesday and then, oh, Sunday comes again. Oh, Wednesday comes again. Oh, you, know, you just keep doing it. And what happens? All your little private interpretations get obliterated at some point, at some time. You see, you're on your own out there. You're interpreting on your own. You don't ever run it through anyone. I don't know how we've gotten in such a sad shape in America. Because the Bible says specifically that when someone prophesies, that you're to judge what they say. Just because someone says, thus says the Lord and has a word for you, doesn't mean it's God. On the second and fourth Sunday nights of every month, we have Life Links. We gather together with like-minded believers and discuss the current series that Pastor Jeremy is preaching. We have food, we laugh together, we pray together, and we build those godly relationships with our brothers and sisters within the church. We would love for you to join us for Life Links. You can find a list of all of our groups along with their locations on our app, our website, or just stop by the desk in the lobby. We have someone there ready to help you find the perfect LifeLink group. Let me just say this. A lot of Christians, they pray the prayer, they cry out to God, God's merciful to them, and then they get stuck in this immature cycle. What I'm talking about is the first rebuke that comes their way, they don't receive it, and so then they're thwarted in their growth, and they never, never grow from there. Why? Rebuke doesn't feel good. But let me just say this. Don't let a rebuke from Jesus keep you from doing the Word. The rebuke is to keep you on track and keep you doing the Word. Because I don't know if you realize this, but when you and I live life and we part ways tonight, some of us are going to be tempted to go do stuff that's against the Word of God. And what you need to do is say, oh, I'm a disciple of Jesus Christ. Somebody rebuke me, please. Only those that really love you will rebuke you. Now listen to me carefully. Listen. God has ordained and designed certain channels for your rebuke. You don't need to go down there to United Grocery Market, and there's some good people that work there. There's Christians that work there, and catch a rebuke from the cashier. However, if you're trying to steal groceries, you're going to catch a rebuke from the cashier because they're authorized to do that. Are you listening to me? Some people, they, they, they don't understand this. When it comes to the hearing of the Word of God, you don't necessarily need to log on to YouTube to find someone to rebuke you. 
You can go get planted in the church where God's called you and stay there and wait on the pastor because eventually he's going to rebuke you if he's a real pastor. Now, I may not be your man, and I'm okay with that, but you need to find one that will rebuke you. I can tell you this. I care a lot more about what the king thinks than you think. So if he tells me to rebuke you and you, you've been here long enough, you could verify and say, yes, that's true. You, you will rebuke us. And I do it in love. I don't do it because I hate you. I do it because I love you. But see, most people and immature always look at rebuke the back, backwards way. They don't look at it the right way. And Jesus had disciples, and we can learn from this. Uh, he charged us to make disciples, so how many think we ought to follow his example? Are you falling asleep yet? I thought if I'd be real monotone, you could fall asleep. No, Jesus charged us to make disciples, not snowflakes. I don't know what you thought you signed up for when you said, I'm going to serve Jesus. But it wasn't to make you a snowflake, to melt under persecution. First post someone does, they don't like your status, I'm out. What, what is this? We're disciples of Jesus Christ. We never stop for anything. Mark 16. Let's go there. Mark 16. I'm excited about this. Praise God. Say it. Thank God for the word. Mark 16, 14. Later he appeared. To the 11. As they sat at the table. They weren't feeling too spiritual. But he appeared. Now how many think all of a sudden you're getting your supernatural spiritual self in gear, real quick, when Jesus appears. Bloop, he appears. You got that? Like, they're sitting around a table, doesn't say what they're doing, but all of a sudden, he appears. This is after the resurrection. This is the first time, the way this is written, this is the first time many of them had seen him after the resurrection. And when you read this, this is very telling of the personality and who Jesus really is. This paints the picture. He shows up with a rebuke. Well, Jesus, all we're doing is sitting around the table. Well, it's not sitting around the table. He rebuked him about. He rebuked him because of unbelief. He rebuked him because of hardness of heart. Because they did not believe those who had seen him after he had risen. So people had seen Jesus. They went and told his disciples, Jesus is alive. Jesus had told them over and over, I'm going to do this. They refused to believe. It's hardness of heart when you refuse to believe. Now, I just want you to know this. Rebuke from the one authorized to rebuke you is the cure for hardness of heart. And you need to know this because no matter who you are or how long you've been in church, if you ever let your guard down when it comes to your heart, it's easy to allow a level of hardness to come over you. And it does show up in your face. It does show up in the way you conduct yourself because what's in your heart will overflow. So hardness of speech is a lot of times related to hardness of heart. Now, I'm not talking about when a rebuke comes, see, you say, well, that's hard. See, that's, that's a demon spirit that tells you that. A demon spirit that's having its way in your heart to make you think the truth is hard. The truth is never hard. The truth will soften you. The truth is what will make you pliable. The truth is what will produce fruit in your life. Now, we've got to keep this right perspective. I want you to look at this right here. He appeared to the 11 as they sat at the table. And what did he do? What's the first thing he did? Do y'all have a Bible? What's the first thing he did? He rebuked. Well, who does he think he is? The King of kings, the Lord of lords. The only one that ever died for you. The one authorized to rebuke you because he knows how many hairs are on your head. You don't even know. So you don't even know if you need a rebuke or not. You don't, you're not the one that determines, well, I needed that. Well, I didn't need to hear that. You don't determine it. You're not your own Lord. I mean, after all, these people believed in him. He appears and he rebukes them. So we got to keep the right perspective when it comes to rebuke. Again, most Christians don't ever pass this mountain. 
There is no one in their life that can rebuke them. No one. They won't hear it. They'll cock attitude. They'll fold their arms. They'll, they'll move. They'll do all this stupid stuff. They're not disciples of Jesus. And if you've been acting that way, I'm talking directly about you. You cocking your old hood attitude, that was supposed to have died already. I still go hood up on you. Well, you better repent because you're on your way to hell. Well, no, I'm not either. Yeah, see, you didn't like that rebuke, did you? But see, that rebuke is so you adjust things, so you get things right before you crash and burn. Rebuke isn't bad. Even sharp rebuke isn't bad. Titus says it like this. Rebuke them sharply that they may be sound in the faith. I've really been glad I've known this verse all my life because I've watched Christianity for decades now, literally. And I've watched as it's morphed into this whole idea that Christianity is nothing but syrup and honey and sugar. And I know in the back of my mind, I'm like, well, why would Titus say rebuke them sharply? That they may be sound in the faith if all it's ever going to be is just syrup and sweetness. and Oh, it's, it's the goodness of God that leads people to repentance. It's not the harshness. Thank you for the same idiotic Facebook post I've seen 10,000 times. And you, by the way, you took the scripture out of context and you didn't even read the next verse. Because the, when that verse was written... They despise the goodness of God. You tell them, and I want the whole world to know God is good. He made a way of escape when there was no way of escape. But if you stomp your feet, fold your arms, squint, say, I don't want that, well, then you don't get it. His blood was enough to pay for you, but you've got to humble yourself. You've got to have some faith about you. Now, in this scripture, I broke this down, and I want you to write this down if you're taking notes. Rebuke means to admonish, to convict, to convince, and to tell a fault. Accelerate Church places a high priority on instilling God's Word into the heart of the next generation. Our kids' ministry is spreading hope by teaching the Word of God on a level that young ones will understand and take home with them. In Accelerate Kids, your kid will experience awesome praise and worship, illustrated sermons from God's Word, and interactive games in both big and small groups. Serving God is fun, and we would love for your kids to join us at Accelerate. See, anything growing in your life that's contrary to the Word must be cut off. And if you don't cut it off, when you face the King of kings and Lord of lords, that's when it's not fun. Because then everything you grew in your whole life on that branch, lop! And there's nothing left. Which is why on earth you've got to do it God's way and find somebody that you say, you know what? Tell me if I'm wrong. I'm studying the Word. This is what I see. And I say, no, nope, that ain't right. And I was with... I won't tell names on this, but a certain individual, and they spouted off something to a man of God. And right in the, I mean, right in mid sentence, they're like, no, 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 that ain't right. Now, most Christians wilt. I'm not going to be around that guy no more. Well, that guy loved the guy he said that to so much that he was willing to stop his ignorant statement and correct it. You can't find that just everywhere. Most people are too concerned about what you think about them. Most people are that way. Well, I watched that happen. And to this day, to this very day, that happened more than 10 years ago. So that happened 10, 15 years back, something like that. And I was sitting there in Fort Worth, Texas at a restaurant. And a guy started saying something. And the guy said, stops. I'm mid-sentence. This is what this scripture. No, 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 no. And that's what I'm saying. Most people, oh, I don't like that. Well, do you want to be sound in the faith or not? I guess we better look up what sound means. Sound means this in the Greek, healthy. Well, here's what I really like. Free of corruption. <laughs> didn't know it was going to be in this series like this. I didn't see this coming, Pastor. Don't worry, neither did I. 
Here's what I know, though. Pollution and corruption keep people from going. That's what happens. You get your life all entwined with things that have nothing to do with what God called you to do. So he says, go and preach the gospel to this whole world. And you never go. Why do you not go? You got polluted somewhere along the way. You got corrupted somewhere along the way because in the environment with no rebuke is nothing but corruption. In this environment, though, you come here. I'm not set out, have a personal agenda to make you feel bad. In fact, I don't even want to do this when it comes to sharply rebuking anyone. But let me just tell you this. If you take the sharp rebukes from right here, then we don't have to meet one-on-one in my office and catch one. This is God's highest form. It's like, hey, would you listen to the word and make corrections? That way you cut off stuff you're growing in your life that ain't of God. Now, it's amazing to me how people will fertilize. They love to put poop and fertilize and water the things that have nothing to do with God. And just keep it in their life and keep it saturated with their attention. They talk about it. They rehearse it. You say, well, the Bible says, oh, I know the word. So what you're growing then is a polluted life. Wow. But see, don't, no one can tell you that in anything. So here's what people say. Only God can judge me. He's going to. And uh, to quote the old school song now, how are you going to plead the case, by the way, before him? Well, I know, I know you wrote the Bible, but I mean, that's the word. And you're looking at the word made flesh staring at you with eyes that burn like fire. I mean, you really think that day's going to go great? When you've never caught one rebuke, you've never received one. You won't receive it. You won't hear it. But boy, I tell you what, you'll sure fertilize the things of this world. You'll sit there and cultivate it. Make sure it's taken care of. Your own thing. But when God steps into your life and says, I've called you by my name for such a time as this. I've called you, step one, get planted in a local church, and you can't do it. Struggle. It's tough. It's hard. It's tough to make it all the time. Don't you know I'm living real life out here? Me too, Jack. But I can tell you this. If you see me during the week and you say, I'll see you come Sunday, you know what you're going to hear from me? I'll be there. I come in. I'll be here. I'm going to be here. And people say, well, you ought to. You're the pastor. Well, you ought to. You're the follower and the sheep. <laughs> but people say this. I'm busy. I'm busy. I noticed you didn't have seven children when you said you were busy. <laughs> I noticed it. I'm busy too. But I'm not too busy for him. And I'm not too busy for a rebuke. In fact, I hunger for it. Through the proper channels. See, it wasn't that long back. I preached a sermon. I thought it was fire, man. I shook hands, everybody. Thank you, it's amazing. I get a text from one of my spiritual fathers. I need to talk to you about something you said today. Okay. So here's how most people think. He would find something that he needs to talk to me about. Everybody loves it over here. I mean, my goodness, everybody loves it. Everybody, Pastor Jeremy, it's amazing. It's amazing. Oh, it's changing my life. But now you want to tell me something I know that I said wrong. See that? You hear what I'm saying? This is how Christians act. And I'm in the same boat when it comes to this kind of stuff. I, I am anointed by God to preach to you. Right? You're anointed to hear it. Well, don't get a bad attitude. Well, I don't know who they think they are. It ain't even about that. God connected me with them. I'm going to honor them. I receive the gift of God off of their life. I'm going to keep receiving the gift of God off their life. You know why? Because when I heard someone that would say, wait a minute, you said this. Here's what the Bible says. You need to think about this. I found someone that truly loves me. Instead, see, we look at it backwards. Oh, he's just hating on me. He's just picking on me. He's just, uh, see, so we're little babies. You want to know how many times in a day 
I rebuke Colin. Tonight, studying for this sermon. He decides he's going to get on the edge of the stairs and throw a ball at me. Ball, ball, ball. It's his favorite word. I said, son, you're 16 months old and you're on the edge of the stairs. I need you to back up. I'm starting to come. Well, he decides to get that ball and throw it right off the edge. He's sitting right on the very edge. And I said, hold it. Stop. What is that? You hateful dad, you. No, I, I, I perceive more than he perceives here. He's on the edge, and he's leaning this way, trying to throw a ball, and all it takes for a 16-month-old that can take steps from here to over there, and he is walking. Hey, that's great, but he usually falls two or three times between here and there. Tumble, face down, tumble down the stairs. I don't want that to happen. Or he's crawling, and he sees an outlet. And you know what? His little finger fits in that hole a lot better than this fat finger fits in there. You don't have to worry about me tonight. I'm not going to go jam it in an outlet. But what does he do? All the toys he's got, or doesn't have, but all the toys from all the other kids that he has, he'll put those aside and find an outlet somewhere. And what do I say? Go for it, son. I love you. I'm your loving dad. I will never rebuke you because I love you so much. That's a pervert. That's an abuser. I'm not saying you're an abuser if your kid did it and you didn't know it. But how many times do they have to get shocked before you say, stop putting your finger in the outlet? Here's what it looks like on his level. No! We all can follow this, right? We say we're Christians. Oh, the Lord's called me by his name. Oh, I'm so thankful to be here. First rebuke that comes. Well, I don't I ain't got time for that. I thought this was a spiritual place. See, we don't recognize the way things really are. I want you to know this. Rebuke keeps you free of corruption. Once again, thank you for tuning in to today's program. If you would like to hear the rest of this series, you can head over to AccelerateChurch.cc and click on the media tab. There you will see sermons that Pastor Jeremy has preached since 2013. And this series is also there ready for you to download. If you are in the area, we would love to meet you in person. We're located at 4400 South Crockett here in Amarillo. Our service times are Sunday morning at 10 a.m. and Wednesday evenings at 7 p.m. We'd love to meet you in person. And if we don't see you in person, we'll catch you on the next Accelerate Church TV broadcast.